So the last thing that we're going to cover is something that you really need to think about when shopping for the greenhouse, and this goes to not all kits are created equal. Uh, so this is in regard to uh, wind braces at the diagonal corners, horizontal bars up at the top, and sometimes a V-truss. So Julian, uh, you've done a lot of work on this uh, here recently designing it. We now have that available as options for your kits. So let's first talk about the diagonal wind braces at the corners. So with the end walls being a flat surface being pushed against by the wind, uh, what the diagonal brace does is it connects onto the end of the end wall and it goes diagonally over to the second hoop. And what this does is it creates a brace. So it's exactly what we call it, a wind brace, and it attaches to it. So it, it's the same as if you put this, this card like this and the wind blows against it. Well, if there's nothing to brace it, it's just going to fall over. So that diagonal brace braces up against it and keeps it from being pushed over. And so with that, I, want, I do want to say that this is designed to keep, like you said, the end wall from raking back and forth and in turn raking lengthwise the whole house back and forth, which is different from the next thing you're going to talk about, which is the horizontal braces, which is to prevent raking from side to side. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is horizontal braces. So when, when you have your hoops up, it's going to run from one side to the other. Uh, it's going to be another connection point, which again, as Nick talked about, the house raking back and forth from the end walls, the hoops, when the wind blows against it, instead of the hoops flexing, it's going to lock one side of the hoop to the other and create more rigidity in the hoop itself. The other thing that I've seen, uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to ours because we don't connect in the center, but for houses that are a two-piece that connect in the center, that horizontal bar can also prevent during a snow event from coming apart. So it's just a ba another way to keep those things together. And so the next thing that we're going to have is uh, purling kits and trusses, but because trusses are part of this horizontal bar, let's start there. So by having the horizontal bar and then tying in additional points or having a V brace in the center, those are, those are more points of contact. There are more structure within the hoop that creates a full truss. Like you would see in a commercial building where you have the V truss going from the, the top to the bottom of an I-beam style structure, that's the same thing. So you have the horizontal bar, then you've got a V-truss that, that ties multiple points together and, and gives that a lot more strength in the upper part of the hoop. An important thing to remember there is you're dispersing the snow load over multiple connection points. So, and, and wind load to some degree, but instead of just relying on the hoop itself or the bar itself with these trusses, you're getting more and more connection points Every connection point and place that you can tie in these things together is just simply more rigidity. And so with that, we also have uh, bars that go lengthwise in between the ridge pole and the hip board, and that is the purling kits. And the purling is essentially an additional ridge pole. It's going to run on both sides of the ridge pole from the end wall to the end wall. And it's another point that ties all the hoops together as well as creates additional support for the plastic on the upper section of it. And so the way I like to look at bracing is A, your day-to-day -day normal activities, all those connection points add up, make it a little bit stronger, make it a little bit more rigid. And then for people in the north that are considering snow load or coastal places or people on the plains that are looking at high winds, it's a little bit of insurance against a major event but it's not going to necessarily replace, hey, you still have to go out and do some maintenance, make sure everything's tight, make sure you don't have any holes. You know, it's gonna buy you a little bit of extra time, but you still have to maintain. You still have to uh, make sure that the snow was removed uh, in, a, in a timely manner, even if it's in the middle of the night during a major snow event. The cleaner you can keep the top of your house, uh, the better off you're going to be. And um, you know, the bracing is certainly going to make it stronger, but at the end of the day, you still have to you know, go out there and take off that snow. And in the next segment, we're going to wrap up this series.